Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I get to interview my friend, Christina Moore Ward, and she is a realtor. But what I, the way that I would describe her is that she is a business owner that has her hands in many things real estate related. And I am excited for this interview because she is one of the most read people that I know. And I love it because she applies it to her life. And I think what you're going to hear in this podcast is her talking about those things that she's read and how she's applied them to create success. So enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We finally got this on our calendar. I'm super excited to have you here. So I would love it if you would start out by just talking a little bit about your journey. Maybe start with being in competitive sports and how that led into business for you. Yeah. Yeah. All luck. That's what it feels like. It's just (laughs) luck. Um, I came to Boise to play volleyball at Boise State 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was my last choice of the five schools that, that you can go visit. You're probably for, not supposed to say that. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but, it, but Boise, I, it sold itself when I landed here. Yeah. So I came because the coaches were nice and they really wanted me to play. Mm-hmm. And the city of trees and the river and the university. And I'm a San Diego girl. I mean, not anymore. I'm an Idahoan. Mm-hmm. But it was an easy choice, easy number one after yeah. the visit. After college, I actually babysat a lot of amazing families, so babysitting led me to so many opportunities. It's about all I could do while I was an athlete is go to school, play volleyball, and babysit. So I babysat for a family that are realtors, husband, wife, realtors, and I became their assistant. So I've been selling real estate for 17 years. Wow. So you went directly into real estate. I've had no other jobs. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Most people, that's not their career track, obviously. No, it wasn't. I wasn't growing up thinking I was going to be a realtor. No, or even just that they go directly into what they end up being successful. Mm -hmm. And usually there's a progression, right? Right. So, and you're more than a realtor because you have many employees, many other realtors that you mentor. So... I think probably for this podcast, there's so many women that are listening that are looking at either starting a business or they have a business and they're in those beginning stages and they're like, how do I get to that successful level? And I love the journey. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, this is a funny way to do it, but let's talk about some of your failures. Like what did that that look like? (laughs) Because you didn't start out the successful person that you are today. So... (laughs) And it's a slowly, slowly, then suddenly you hear about these overnight successes Mm -hmm. and they're not true. Yeah. And I want young people to know that, that Mm -hmm. there was a lot. There's still failures. I didn't get a listing this week. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of the top agents in the country. And it just, we fail a lot. And it's being willing to to do it more has allowed me to be more successful. And, and I the think learning learn from, from it. it. I was mm-hmm. going to say learn from it. Because you and I have talked about that a lot, about the learning that comes if you're willing to receive the learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that client I called and I got feedback in it. And it's little, it's so teeny tiny. Mm-hmm. And it was. it's just a perception. But it allows me to communicate better, be clearer, mm-hmm. and realize that sometimes it's a gift. Failure is, is such a gift. Like it leads us right to where we're supposed to be. It doesn't feel like it at the time, though. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good to say that, though, because I think sometimes people will hear someone that's really successful say, oh, I learned for fail- through failure. And they're thinking, so failure was just easy for you, but it's not easy for me. But that's <laughs> just not the case. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I, I pretend to be strong. And then at home with my husband, he gets he gets the he gets to be the sounding board of the challenges. And I like things to go so well. So maybe I'll even pretend say something's a failure, someone else wouldn't look at it that way. Mm -hmm. But I want it to be so perfect that um, I dissect the situation. I do learn from it. And I've also learned to move past it a lot faster than I used to. 
That's a, a lot faster. Fantastic point, actually, mm -hmm. because I do think that, especially in all of the women that I've interviewed that have the success that they do, that is one key piece that you would see in all of them is that they don't wallow in it. Mm -mm. They just decide to move past it yeah. more quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's a huge. Lane's, Lane's my husband. He says it's is this is happening for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my biggest probably failure was in the Great Recession, and I don't even know if it's a failure. It's just what happened, and now we look at it like as a gift, a gift of learning how to live very simply. You know, I wasn't I was selling real estate in the recession, so started in 2005 when the market was pretty good, mm -hmm. and then got to experience hopefully the the worst thing that we'll ever see in real estate of all time. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a long period of time with no income. And Lane had a W-2 job at the time, and his income got cut. And so then all of a sudden, the month had to go perfect or we were under, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if a car broke or, or something in our house broke, we we couldn't pay, our, pay everything. And we are credit card payers. Like, we pay the full credit card bill. So that it's like first world problem failure, right? Like, it wasn't major debt or that kind of situation. It was just more of we weren't making enough to eat even rice, barely rice and beans. Mm -hmm. What we learned from that, though, is we still live below our means. Yeah. We've bought real estate before cars, fancy cars. We've um, gone on fantastic trips, bigger than we've ever imagined. But we, we've lived in homes that is less than maybe my competitors have. And even in this last pan the pandemic, it felt similar to the recession. Mm -hmm. And I, in March, end of March 2020, I thought, is this the same thing again? And we knew exactly what to do. We went and cut our expenses. We kept all of our employees. I saw competitors have to cut employees. Mm -hmm. And um, and the gift of the recession allowed me to, to have a larger profit by living less mm -hmm. so that I don't have to make sacrifices like that on people. Yeah, that's a... That's a huge one, and that's not one that a lot of people are willing, a lot of business owners, I think, are willing to take that hit in order to keep their employees. The good ones are, and you saw it a lot, actually, in the recession. And then the pandemic was like such a blip of mm -hmm. for real for, estate. Yeah. It was such a, I mean, we've had the best years of our life. and, and mm -hmm. Especially and, in the market that you're into. I in mean, Boise, Idaho. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been awesome. So let's talk a little bit about motherhood because along all of this success, and I know you have a really strong partner in your husband, but mm -hmm. you are still the primary in mm -hmm. your business and mm -hmm. your mom. Mm -hmm. So talk about the balance in that. What does that look like mm -hmm. for you? I think for everyone, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for you? Well, I call it counterbalance because I don't think balance is possible. Mm -hmm. In counterbalance, you can think about doing yoga and a tree pose. Mm -hmm. We're constantly making adjustments. Yeah. So it's not it's not like I have it all figured out and it's perfect ever, but I don't want to see big, huge adjustments like too much work or too much family. Mm -hmm. And I get that from The One Thing. It's one of my favorite books. It's a great book. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't make this stuff up. I don't make anything up. I learned from somebody else. Um, my mother was the primary income earner as well, she was a, she a CPA and then a CFO mm -hmm. in the 80s. She was one of the only women in, in accounting. And so I had a great exam. And my grandmother even, powerful line, powerful women, line of women. And my daughter is even more powerful, which is crazy. Um, so I've had a lot of great examples. And our, it, in order to counterbalance with our family, we would rely, rely on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not afraid to pay for leverage and not feel bad about it. You know, pay for our food to get delivered, pay for our lawn to get mowed, our house to get cleaned. I started getting my house cleaned weekly when Spencer was born, and I thought it was a temporary thing just while I had a baby. And seven years later, I still get my house cleaned every week. Um, so talk about that. Because so <laughs> many women, no, it's true. Yeah. So many women struggle with that. Like, they feel like, oh, but if I'm not the one doing that, then I'm... 
I don't know, like shirking a duty that is supposed to be mine. Yeah. Especially, I think, with the things in the home, like, oh, that should be on yeah. me instead of realizing, oh, but mm. if I put that time over here or instead if I take that time and I invest it with my children, then I do get really what I want by paying someone to do this. Mm -hmm. So talk about how you make that choice because that is a really, really big decision mm -hmm. when a woman decides to do that. And I've watched so many women, insanely successful women, yeah. struggle with the fact that Still they're not the house. one. Yeah. 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 Or the house cleaner doesn't do it as good as they would. Right. <laughs> and I'm just accepting of 75% is good enough, mm -hmm. you know? And and I, because I, I have high standards and I just accept it and realize it's a gift of time. Mm -hmm. And my time is more valuable than me doing things that I don't enjoy and not good at. Time um, and energy. I actually and, think yeah. one of the, I, and I'm a reader as well, you know this, but for me, I read a book that talked about how we talk about time all the time, and it's really, it's the energy component, yeah. mm -hmm. because that time, uh -huh. really, it's what you put into it, right? So you not cleaning yeah. gives you the emotional yeah. and, yeah. I heard that about burnout recently, the definition of burnout, I'm going to mess it up, but it's something around when you have expectations of something and it doesn't go the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that you have too much time in all of these different, it could be time, but it could be that our, we're putting too much energy or focus into a certain area of our life that's not making us happy. And yeah. that's what burns us out. That's a great definition. And I honestly feel kind of burnout right now. And we can talk about that later. But as far as um, um, at home, it's, it, it, it's deciding what is my highest and best use of time and I want to be with my children. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't want my kids to say I was a great realtor or a great leader, CEO. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my clients to come to my funeral. I want my family and my kids to, I mean, my clients can if they want. But I want, <laughs> my kids to, I want my kids to come. And I want them to say, you know, she was a great mom. Mm -hmm. And if I'm running a business and I coach and teach as well, I coach realtors, teach realtors, and I used to run other businesses at the same time, which I luckily have let those go because that was just way, way too much. You can't chase two rabbits and catch both of them. You're lucky to catch one. Um, I had to let go of home, home responsibilities. And one day I was just, it was probably another burnout moment. I have burnout about once a quarter and I wake, go to sleep and wake up the next day feeling great. Um, but it's like break, breakdown leads to breakthroughs. So one day I just came home and I couldn't handle the house being a mess. I couldn't handle the stress of the day and then the stress of home. And Lane, my husband, asked, what can I do, like, consistently? And I said, the dishes. <laughs> He's been doing the dishes for two years. And it seems so small, It's but it's the mental side of, I don't have to do that. And I do it, right? Um, we've also created, I learned this from a client, strengths-based list, and they learned it from a counselor. Ooh, that's a great one. Yeah. And so we actually negotiated on who does what. So we have job roles at our house. And and it, it one person in the family could be the income earner, and then the other person could have a longer list, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that could switch because someone else could go get their master's degree or, you know, mm -hmm. to really t just negotiate and decide this. Tidying is mine. I love tidying. Mm -hmm. And um, Lane is... It, the dishes guy, and he likes the laundry too. And I'm like, cool, like, go for um, it, yay! <laughs> and then and maybe that changes. We renegotiate the list in a, a year, and um, and then there's things that nobody wants to do, mm -hmm. and so we negotiate who does that or who we pay to do that. And it was a, it's a great exercise. And when I give you my information at the end, if people want the li our list, I'll mm -hmm. share it. Yeah, it's a great. I had never thought about it in that way. The negotiation piece of it, because it really is, mm -hmm. yeah. There's some things I really want to do, and right. there's some things he really wants to do that mm -hmm. we have, we have gifts. We shouldn't be doing the things we're not good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the questions I always ask my clients is, do you remember when you hit six figures and what that felt like for you? I remember the year that I didn't hit six figures and then the next year because at my company we do um, the six-figure award, and it's really inspiring to see the different people with different backgrounds doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And I made $95,000 that year. And I was just like mad. But it also was inspiring. And then it was like a runway with a takeoff after that. So it was 2012 or 2013. And um, I had sold 
50 houses with an assistant. And that was coming out of the recession. So 50 houses now would be rich. But then it was, you know, the average price was like 225. Mm -hmm. And it was um, humbling and exciting and especially after coming out of a recession. Yeah. Did it, so you said it's humbling. Why was it humbling? Well, I don't know. I just, my degree was in health education and I thought I'd be running like the Micron Health Education Program yeah. or something like that. I knew I was going to run something. Right. I made to be a boss um, and lead or, you know, work at Boise State University and, you know, mm-hmm. make $50,000 or mm-hmm. thirty. I don't know. And so to make $100,000 as a woman, there's there's some, there's a statistic that shows that we make a lot less than men. Correct. And I think it's a big deal. And, and it creates opportunities for other people. I think some people think, it's selfish to want to make lots of money, but it's selfish for me to not create opportunities for people. And I, the more money I make, the more employees I get to hire and the more money I get to give to charity. Yeah. I, I absolutely echo that because I, I've had people give me pushback on that. Oh, you talk about money. And I'm like, I don't understand why that's such an issue. It allows you to do so much more. And money is just a tool, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's energetic Mm -hmm. and abundant. Mm -hmm. And now I can be abundant with time. And I've never felt actually so safe with money after probably having some post-traumatic stress Mm -hmm. from what we went through. And now that we have, you know, a business that it doesn't run itself, like I got to get up every day and work it, but it's it's more consistent. And we have a passive income that's more consistent and other Mm -hmm. business opportunities and And that's really cool because then I don't have to worry about a bad month or taking a month off or I don't have to worry about taking a risk and trying something new. Yeah. It's really fun. So you already mentioned the book, The One Thing. I always ask a book or podcast. Yeah. Is there a podcast out there that you listen to on a regular basis other than mine? (laughs) I I don't really listen to it. I actually, after listening to yours, I started listening to it on hikes. Because my friend was interviewed, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to her. It's so cool. Um, and so I thought I should find a new podcast for hikes, but I really like the meditative, mm-hmm. quiet side of hikes. And and I like the feeling of a book and reading a book. I do, So too. I'm kind of old school. I know. Me, too. And that. Yeah. I like highlighting and circling mm-hmm. and writing notes. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so one mom tip. Is there a tip that you have? What's your best mom tip? I have so many mom tips. What's my best? Um, Gosh. You know, probably a tip for myself is to be okay with it being messy. You know, my friend recently said, you still have a toddler? Mm -hmm. Because I was hoping to create a little bit more presence and calmness in the house. And she's like... (laughs) You have a toddler. You have a toddler. <laughs> like the, it's just not possible. And you're, she's like, you're going to miss that someday. And so just being okay with the house being messy, being okay with maybe, you know, I hate disappointing people or messing up on people, right? So forgetting to do something or... So giving yourself some grace. Grace to just embrace the chaos and the mess. And mm-hmm. I've heard over and over again that when they become teenagers... I'll miss this stage, even though the stage is hard. And so just r- r- truly being grateful and present. Mm-hmm. I recently heard um, Sean Anker speak, mm-hmm. The Happiness Advantage. And he talked about how our brains take a goal and just go up. Like you get to the goal and it automatically raises the goal. So it's hard to be happy because we're always looking for the next thing. Mm-hmm. And he recommended that we do a 21-day challenge of gratitude. And I thought, well, okay, we already do the gratitude thing, but this was more of a specific challenge. So you write down exactly what you're grateful for the last 24 hours, three things, and then the next day, a new three things. And he actually has proven to take op- pessimists up to optimists in 21 days. And that's been really cool to think about. Like, mm-hmm. instead of focusing on with my family how hard it is or sleep deprived I still am or how messy the life is to just really be grateful for that chaos and that noise yeah and enjoy the moment enjoy it i can tell you because i'm in the teenager phase yeah yeah Yeah. 
And that's great too, right? It's just it different is. hard. It's just different. I tell yeah. people all the time, I was actually talking to someone that didn't have children yet and they asked me, so, you know, is it really worth it? I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. There is, it's the most work you will ever do in your life. Mm-hmm. And it is the most joy. And I truly think looking back at it now, I wish I would have, someone would have given me that advice to just enjoy the mess because mm-hmm. I'm that same, like, I want it tidy. And I want it. Yeah. <laughs> and you spend too much time on it and you yeah. should just be on the ground being messy with them. Yeah. <laughs> or you just so. pay someone to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. So what am I not asking? What did I not ask you? You have so much wisdom in business. Our demographic is a lot of women that are aspiring to six figures. And then we have women that would be our counterparts. But a lot of the listeners are aspiring. What did I not ask that you think would be a great piece for them? We we talked a little bit about that runway, Mm -hmm. that long runway to take off and putting in the work. There's no overnight success. And um, the consistent, what, what I've done well from the beginning is I've created a, a calendar where there's consistent activities that I can control. So I know that I can wake up and exercise, meditate, pray, that I'm still working on that part, but mm-hmm. it's my intention. Mm-hmm. And then I go to the office, like a real job. It's real ter- I mean, we can't watch we can't watch the HGTV shows and think it's like that, right? <laughs> so I go to the office and I spend time on the phone connecting with people. And mm-hmm. still, I mean, I used to do it more when I was struggling and I needed to make those contacts to make sales. Mm -hmm. But my business has been grown through relationships. And I just, I sell more real estate. My team sells more real estate because we have more relationships than anyone else. And that's time blocked in my calendar to make those connections. And I'm not allowed to review an inspection report or put out a fire until I make those connections first, because that's the business that created that inspection report, Mm -hmm. right? Um, and then I get to go on appointments, and then I have family time blocked, too. Because I realized somebody, someone wiser than me said, um, show me your calendar, and I'll tell you your priorities. Because I was saying that family's my priority. Mm-hmm. And just like a good having a good nutritionist, I thought, well, I'm going to change my calendar really quick before I show this person. Just like if you're a nutritionist, I'm not going to eat cookies because I don't want to show mm-hmm. the nutritionist that I ate cookies. And um, so I changed my calendar. It changed my life because I put the children in the calendar and then he held me accountable to to treat him like a million dollar listing appointment. And how dare I not do that? And, it, it, and it's something about, it's it, if it's white space, you can fill it. Mm-hmm. But if it says kid time or family time, it'd make you feel like a really bad person to erase it and put a client in there. Mm-hmm. And I have had emergencies before where I move it, but I don't erase it. I love that. I actually just taught a class on time management to a group of women, and I, that quote is a quote that I always have in there. Mm-hmm. Show me what you do with your time, and I'll show you your life. Like, you yeah. can tell. And mm-hmm. it's, um, to me, I've had so many people push back on me in that and say, oh, but your life is so structured. Mm-hmm. It's too structured for me. Mm-hmm. So how would you respond to that? Mm-hmm. I'm actually really creative. I didn't think I was. I thought I was a very structure, process-oriented person, and um, and I am. Like the, I have high standards and high structure in my life, um, but I take I actually have structured time away to be creative. Yeah. So lots of vacations, lots. Like I can't stop. I love my work. I love my team. I love my mm-hmm. my home. So, but if I I get out of the city, even to a place two hours from here, I can really slow down and be creative. Mm-hmm. And so I guess that's structure too, but then that allows for fun more, and more flexibility. My yeah, husband yeah. says I'm a different person on vacation, and that's that's cool. You know, mm-hmm. more playful and fun, and we laugh more, and it's it's very important for our family to go on vacation. And I've started vacationing alone too, and that has been incredible. I'm even writing a book, so I just go away and. We're going to have to talk about that on a different one. Yes. A different podcast. <laughs> that vaca- I, I had a friend recommend that to me a couple of years ago. And I I honestly had never really thought about vacationing by myself prior oh, to that. It's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. life-changing in itself. It is. Yeah. And vacationing thank- with friends. Mm-hmm. Thank you for taking the time. And thank you for thank doing you. this. Mm-hmm. So 
Will you look at the camera and just tell them how they could get in contact with you if they wanted sure. to? And if anyone wants your list, oh, we'll post it. List. Yeah, we'll post it with okay. the podcast. Oh, but, I love that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Christina Moore Ward on social media, Instagram and Facebook. And our website is christinaandcompany.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.